Peace and light, everyone. My name is Hugh Signey Jr., and I am the Senior Program Manager for Racial Equity at B-Lab US in Canada. What led me to this impactful work was the earthquake in Haiti in 2010 when I decided to provide a platform to the Haitian people uplifting their voices. What motivates me to work in racial equity is the opportunity to bridge communities of Black, Brown, Indigenous, and people of color with C-suite executives in order to enact impactful and sustainable change. Hi, my name is Mario Martin, and I go by Mari. I'm Racial Equity Program Manager for B-Lab US and Canada. I grew up in Washington, D.C., formerly known as Chocolate City. And at the time, I was living within an environment that had systemic oppression, although I didn't understand it. What keeps me going in this work when it gets tough is thinking about the people I grew up with and how their lives may be different if they had the resources they needed. B-Lab defines racial equity as just and fair inclusion into a society in which all people, immaterial of their race or ethnicity, can participate, prosper, and reach their full potential. In the U.S. and in Canada, racial inequity is largely perpetuated by structural racism. Structural racism refers to the historical and ongoing political, cultural, social, and economic policies and practices that systematically disadvantage people of color disproportionately. It is a joy and privilege to introduce you to B-Lab's racial equity strategy, which is comprised of four pillars, learning journey, storytelling, moving beyond DEI statements, and redistributing power to frontline communities. I invite you to the movement. In order for our B Corps to be encouraged to care about racial equity, storytelling must be utilized to engage hearts and minds by uplifting frontline communities. Textiles are a part of everything that we do, and they tell the story of what we care about. I am Dr. Kimberly McGlon. I'm the founder and CEO of Grant Boulevard. Grand Boulevard is a response to everything that's so tragic about fashion as it is. We are a Black-owned fashion brand based in Philadelphia, committed to creating sustainably sourced, ethically produced style. For us, we're thinking about mitigating damage and harm. We choose our fabrics based on, you know, like what's available. How do we reimagine existing garments or how do we take dead stock and kind of use it to create some soul food? Grand Boulevard would be nothing without our design team. They do all of our pattern making, they do all of our sketching, they bring them to life. And it's because of their commitment and their dedication that everything you see here even exists. I started Grand Boulevard because of my sense of concern for women who are formerly incarcerated. 80% of them are moms. You know, as a mom, that really resonated with me that story of disconnection and of isolation. And when I thought about how I could show up, I thought it was style. For us, the ways in which a blank t-shirt can become a canvas is really exciting. Back in 2019, we launched a piece that says, In Mass Incarceration. You know, the truth is, is that our garments always tell the story of our values. We've shipped to 42 states in the country, so I think our presence is being felt. I think about all of the hours of living wage work we've made, you know, all of the ethical production we've been a part of and been able to champion. The thousands of hours that we've given in service to nonprofits like Books Through Bars and dollars that we've given to nonprofits like the Youth Sentencing and Reentry Project. And I think we've done a really remarkable job of getting people to think differently about what they wear and who's produced what they've worn. And when we think about creating a more equitable world, it also has to include a story of how our decisions about sustainability begin to center differently, particularly colonized people. And I think until we can get to that point of awareness, then we're falling short of precisely what we need to be tending to now, which is not just the planet, but also the well-being of people. In order for our B Corps to be able to mobilize on racial equity, they first require in-depth education and training on various topics within the field. White Men for Racial Justice is a organization group of white men who really share a common purpose to dismantle racism. We want to protect the system because we know it. So I have to live with all of that hypocrisy. Working on that through education about history and systems with a heavy informs from uh, equity advisors that help really understand the evolution of systems that have got us to where we are today. You probably wouldn't bring or do any harm to me here. One of the reasons that I joined WMRJ it's because it's going to take white men 
to help eradicate some of the social ills that they fucked up. This is not something that you can take your money and treat my community like strippers. And I like this group of white men. They got some direction. They're always in the work, man. They do not waver in trying to understand, but they also understand that they can't do it alone. Decarceration Fund is probably one of the highlights of my life because it gives returning citizens an opportunity to be great. The Decarceration Fund, it's a seed stage fund where we invest in innovative solutions that are trying to create disruption in the criminal legal system to reduce the likelihood that somebody gets into the system, reduce suffering to individuals or their families while they're in the system, or improve the likelihood of a successful transition out of the system the learning journey of understanding a lot of history in the United States has really helped inform the way we've made decisions about the design of the fund. One thing I love about being on this as an advisor is I can make a suggestion, like it was one particular company, you gotta go there. And next thing I know, I get a call from Chris and he was like, do we seen it? And um, you were right. Chris Bentley, he really understands the disadvantages of people like myself have coming home from prison. Here's a firm that actually puts their money where their mouth is. And I, and I love the incarceration fund, it's dope. Being a part of both has been very interesting because the evolution of one has informed my actions in another. History shouldn't be like an emotional thing, it should be an informative thing. The more that you can understand about the state of our country today, the more that you can try to do things to change it. In order for a B Corps to move beyond talking about racial equity and moving into action, they require guidance on internal business practices. So Greyston Bakery, we are a for-profit, the benefit corporation, but most people know us by our brownie inclusions. You may not know that it's us, but anytime that you've had a Ben & Jerry's pint of chocolate fudge brownie, you've had one of our products. We also provide the packaged brownies that you might see in Whole Foods. We are the company that makes those brownies and they're made by our open hires every day. At a very basic level, open hiring means you hire the next person through the door. The way we do it at Grayston Bakery is you simply have to add your name to our jobs list. And when we do our calls to bring people in for orientation, you got the job, no questions asked. And it's a model that we've been using now for 40 years. Bernie Glassman is our founder. Bernie had this vision in 1982 that it was an injustice when you had people that wanted to work, but they might've had one or two barriers to employment. He saw these folks on the street and he would literally pull them off the street and say, hey, do you wanna work? I would say it's evolved since 1982, because we saw as we were bringing folks in, you realize that they need additional support. So how can we keep our, our folks here and make sure that they're thriving? So we actually added what we now call a resource and support specialist. So if I need housing, if I'm having transportation challenges, this person connects you to the organization that can provide those resources. When you think about the salaries that have been generated, when you think about the people that have been diverted from the criminal justice system, $14 million of economic impact has been returned to this community because they got a job either through Grayston Bakery or through Grayston Foundation where we train folks and place them into jobs as well. That's a huge benefit to the community. Redistributing power is one of the most powerful pillars of our strategy encouraging our B Corps to give service, resources, and advocacy towards pressing racial equity efforts. My name is Terrell Hegler, and your fave trash man is a really chill guy who just loves this community and really wants to push Philadelphia forward in the most positive way. Welcome to Wednesday, guys. The waste management challenges here in Philadelphia are multi-layered. We have sanitation workers who are getting sick and hurt. We have neighborhoods who don't get their trash picked up until about two days later. We have an enormous amount of illegal dumping. And I think the biggest thing that we have is we have a system that isn't working for everybody. During the pandemic, trash here was so bad. 
were quarantining. We had angry residents. I got a gun pulled out on me. So I, I really started your fave trash man Instagram just to give a light to people on what sanitation workers go through on a daily basis to help them realize that we're human beings too. The positive outcomes that came, for one, the respect that sanitation workers have. Like, there's a support sanitation hashtag that has its own page because so many people were using it. My nonprofit, Trash to Treasure, my first cleanup, I only had 40 people. By my fifth cleanup, I had 200 people in North Philadelphia picking up six tons of trash on Martin Luther King Day. I think I'm most proud of is that little groups began to create their own little Your Fave Trash Man. So each neighborhood would go and clean trash every Saturday. People felt empowered to take their neighborhoods back and make an impact for themselves versus waiting on somebody else to do it. It was a whole movement that began from picking up trash off the street. I'm running for city council at large here in Philadelphia because I don't feel that there's an everyday Philadelphian that's going through what I've gone through or that is going to advocate for me. I want to represent those Philadelphians that feel like Philadelphia has given up on them. My mother is my greatest inspiration. As a child, I grew up seeing my mom be a servant, always helping others. And literally her last words to me before she passed away was, use your fave trash man to change the world. We got the hope and we bring in the remedy, working it steadily. We